Welcome back to our channel. Thank you for coming back week after week. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for the love that you show us. Um, and thanks for the feedback and for the requests for the videos. I am working on the ones that you've asked for. They will be coming in the future, so keep coming back. Yours will be there really soon. Today, we are working on an advanced mathematic activity. This is pretty much the last materials that we cover uh, for math in the preschool, in the early childhood classroom. And what we are learning about today is the stamp game. Not sure many of you have heard of it. Um, it isn't used by all centers. Uh, some of the centers, Montessori centers, use the golden beads for this material. But we are going to be showing you how to do that activity with the stamps. Now, originally, when Maria Montessori came up with this, she was using the golden beads. And, um, you know, there were some people later from uh, her organization who realized that it would be easier for children to use the stamps. They're already five by, this, by the time they start doing this activity. So sometimes the golden beads can be a bit tedious and time consuming for them. And this would make it faster and they would be able to do more in the same amount of time. So that's why they went on to develop the stamp game. What we're doing today is four digit addition. Now, um, a lot of people get a little bit shocked and they're like, but it's preschool four digit addition how how can they possibly add 2351 plus 1233 that's just i mean i didn't do that when i was in school i didn't do that till i was in the fourth grade or the fifth grade but when you have a look at it you're gonna see just how simple and easy it is why wouldn't we do it if the child can and they enjoy it why not so have a look and then we'll talk a little bit more. Anna, today we're going to do addition with the stamps. Okay, now we're going to look at these numbers. What number is this, do you know? 100. It's got three zeros. This is 1,000. Okay. 1, and this one? 110. One. Okay, so let's read this number together. 2,300. Two 45 okay we want to lay it on the mat how many thousands do you need two can you put two thousands over here okay how many hundreds do we need three can you put three hundreds over here do you see h for hundreds yeah. no okay let's put it here all right how many tens do we need four can we put four tens here ten okay and how many units do we need? Five. Can we put five units here? Sorry, let me move a bit for you, okay? Now this that is the, the this one is the second addend. Can we read it together? How many thousands? We have to take it from the box, okay? I'm keeping I don't want to waste this. We need these for something later. Okay? Let's put it here.
now today we are going to do addition okay I'm going to put this here so you can write here okay and addition is when we have two small numbers we put them together and we're going to get a bigger quantity okay now when we add a big number we start with the units can you bring all the units to the bottom of the mat no one's on top yep all of them okay. now can you count and tell me how many units do you have all together one two three four five six seven can you record the answer in the units box how many count and see one two three four five six seven mm -hmm. let's bring these all to the bottom okay Can you count and see? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can you record your answer in the tens box? Should we add all the hundreds? Can you bring them down? They're going to be all sevens. Count and see how many do you have all together? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can you record your answer in the hundreds box? And finally, let's add all the tens. I, I'm going to be correct. This is going to be all tens. All sevens. Can One, you count? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can you record your answer? So now, let's see what we have. When we have the first add end of, can you read this? 2,000. 2,345. Add it to the second add end of 5,432. We get the sum 7,777. Now our answer is at the back. Can you see? Is it correct? Yes. Yes? Okay. So we're going to put these stamps back and we'll do the next one. All right? So what you saw there was what we call static addition, which is addition without changing. Okay? Take a moment and watch this video where after the child has mastered this, that means they have worked on static addition with me. They complete the sum card with me and then they go on to do it a few times on their own, maybe three or four or five sum cards of static addition on their own. Then I would take them into doing dynamic addition, which is addition with changing. What we called in school carrying over. Have a look at that as well and then we'll chat. Anna, today we're going to be doing addition, but with changing. We call this dynamic addition, okay? And we're going to read the first add-in together. 2,385. Do you remember how to lay it out on the mat? Can you lay it out? How many thousands? How many hundreds? How many tens? Hello. I can count. You can count with me, okay? Let's count together. One, two, three. Four, five. We need some more. He does need four. Do we? Yeah, because five, because I know five and four makes eight. Is it? Five. Six. Six, seven, eight. Okay. How many units? Seven. This one? Five. Can you put five units? One, two, three, four. Is and that what we five. need? Okay, let's put them here. Plop. 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 
Plop. Plop. Okay, now let's read the second add end. 5,737. Five, Can you lay it out? So we're going to add these two quantities of stamps. And remember, when we do addition, we have two small quantities. We put it together and we get a bigger quantity. Do you remember where we start when we add? The yeah. units. Can you bring all the units to the bottom of the mat? Now, here's where we're going to do something different, okay? One. Hold on. You're going to count. When you reach 10 units, you're going to put them back in the box and change it into one ten stamp. Can you do that? Okay, let's count together. One, one two, two, three, four, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, can you take these? Put them back in the box and exchange it into 110 and we'll put that up here. Now, how many units do you have all together? Two. Can you record that in the units box? Okay, that's okay. What do you say? All right, okay. Now, we're going to add the tens. Can you bring all the tens to the bottom, including this one? Mm -hmm. Oops, I took a lot of hundreds. Okay, how about that one? You we see? need that one too. Mm -hmm. So can you count ten tens here? When you one, reach ten tens, what do you think one, you're going to do? Two, one, two, three. What are we going to do with these? Can you give a guess? What do we change it into? Okay, all right. Now, how many have tens? Two. Can you record your answer? Shall we bring down all the hundreds? Can you bring them to the bottom? Now I want One, to see. Yeah. Two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Then we have what are you going to do with these? We have to put them back in the box. Mm -hmm. Then we put a 100 there. What number is this? We do know. 1,000. We put one here. Right. And, and then how we many do we have, have all together? One. Okay. So we write it here. All right, now let's add all the thousands. Can you bring them to the bottom all the thousands. and count them? We need this here. We haven't finished yet. Let's bring all of these down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so how many do you have all together? Eight. Can you record your answer? So, when we have the first add end of 2385, we add it to the second add end of 5737, we get the sum 8122. Can you check if your answer is correct? Is it Eight, correct? 8122. Two. Correct? Yeah. Okay, so let's put these stamps away and we'll do the next one. Didn't I tell you it was really simple? I mean, there's nothing to it. If the child can count up to 10, they can easily do this. And of course, by the age of five, they can. I don't know if you remember doing this in school. It just seemed so mind boggling when it was just on the paper. But the minute it becomes concrete and I can see what's happening, I'm able to remember it. Just like Maria Montessori said, what the hand does, the mind remembers. And that's exactly what we're doing with the child. She's physically handling the thousands, the hundreds, the tens, the units. She's putting them together. She's feeling and she is seeing how two small quantities come together and they make a bigger quantity. And now I have more stamps at the end of it. 
So the whole concept behind addition is making sense to her in a very concrete way. These kind of experiences do not leave the child, they stay with the child. In a similar way, do you remember being in school and doing the carryover? I mean, it was done in such a strange way that didn't really make sense. We would count, we would put one number down, they would tell us to cross something above and draw a number on top, write a number on top. I mean, there really wasn't, in the, in the mind of a child, it doesn't have any connection. But over here, she reaches 10 units, she puts them back and she exchanges it for 110. And she puts that 10, just as we put it on top on paper, she puts it on top as well. Okay, and then again she repeats it. I don't know if you notice, but by already by the time she had reached the tens, she already got the concept and she knew what she had to do. I didn't really have to tell her, maybe a little prompt, but by the time she reached the hundreds, she was fine. She knew exactly what needed to be done, where it needed to be placed. That is the beauty of doing things with concrete objects. It, you know, you're, you grasp onto things much, much faster. Very, very important aspect of this is the language that you use. You would have seen that I mentioned this is the first addend, this is the second addend, this is the sum. When we have the first addend of 1,233 added to the second addend of 3,122, we get the sum. Now, some people may think, why is she using such complex words? Why can't you just say 1,222 plus 2,333? Why can't you just say that? Now, when the child hears these words, at this stage, when they're still in the absorbent mind stage, taking in everything like a sponge, it will stick, all right? What they learn now remains with them forever. If you haven't already watched our absorbent mind video, I'm linking it here and you can see how amazingly their brains work right now. So they're listening to these words. It's getting instilled in them that, okay, this is the terminology that we have when we're working on addition. Now, when they get into primary, they start doing word, pro word problems or what they call story problems. And in the story problems, as time goes on, it gets more and more complex. And they will say things like, you know, they will use it and say, take the first addend and put it together with the second addend and tell us what is the sum. Or Mary walked five miles and then she walked another 10 miles. What is the sum of the miles she spoke about that she walked? In that story problem, nobody ever mentioned addition. They never said anything about it. All they did was use the word sum. And with that, we're supposed to know that it's an addition problem, right? This is what they are taking children towards. Now, if they've already heard this from preschool, they will be able to put it together. It works for them that way, all right? When we are adding over here, I use the words, you know, you can go back and listen again. Let's bring down all the units. Let's count and see how many do we have all together. So she's again learning terminology that's associated with addition. If I was doing subtraction, I would say, let's take this away and see how many do we have left. So that again in the story problems, they will say, Mary ate five apples. Then she waited and ate another six apples. How many did she eat all together? Again, there's nothing which says addition there. It's that one word all together that's the key that tells us what we should be doing, what operation we should be performing. So you've got to be really, really um, wise with your words, selective with your words, and use the correct termino terminology if you want it to benefit your child in the long run. While this is really beautiful material to buy, you don't have to buy it. It's super easy to make as well. On the internet, they have a lot of printable versions of the stamp game. All you have to do is take that and print it accordingly on the corresponding colored paper. So if you have thousands, they would be printed on green. If you have hundreds, they will be printed on red. If you have tens, they're printed on blue. And if you have units, they're again printed on green. Print it off, laminate it, cut it, 
And this, of course, is easy to make. It's from felt. You can do it on green, that is the original color, or you can do it, you know, on another color, whatever is available for you, something neutral. And uh, this is something I made at home. I did not buy this. So it's easy to put this together. Um, you can do it on paper if you don't want to do it on felt, but felt is the original way that uh, we do it in Montessori classrooms. So you really don't have to spend too much money. You don't have to waste too much time. You can get started with this activity as soon as possible. Uh, if you have a look at the sum cards as well, this is what the sum card looks like on the front. We have four sums. Um, we have the boxes for the thousands, the hundreds, the tens and the units and they all have their corresponding color in which they are written. And now if you turn over you can see at the back that we've got the answer. This is the child's control of error so that eventually they can work independently. They don't have to worry about the you know coming back to the teacher and waiting for her to correct their work. They flip it over, they check their answer. If there's a mistake, they go back and they repeat it. They examine the stamps and they see where did I go wrong? And that learning is invaluable for them. It shows them where their own mistake is and from that they are able to learn more. Of course, if you haven't watched our video on the control of error, it's a brilliant, brilliant insight onto the value of children learning from their own mistakes. I'm linking it right here for you to have a look at and um, you'll be amazed. It's, it's really beautiful. I really, really do hope that you're going to try this out. You will be amazed how much children love this activity. They can sit down and do three or four sum cards at a stretch because they get so engaged in, you know, putting the numbers together and so involved in it and so, uh, you know, excited by what they're doing. Their concentration goes so deep, they just sit with it for so long and you can keep taking them further and further. We'll come back and show you how we do subtraction as well as division in the future. So make sure that you are subscribed and your notifications are turned on so you don't miss any of our videos. I look forward to coming back and sharing more Montessori knowledge with you. Please do show some love if you have liked this video. If you have some comments, if you have some questions, please leave them below and I'll be happy to answer them. And until we meet again, have a beautiful day.